You, you said we shouldn't be nearly as involved as we are in foreign affairs and, and support, defense support, military for mm -hmm. our allies. Well, what, if, what if the Soviets started sending the money if we didn't send the money? And, and, and the Soviet system would fall even more rapidly. They came and feed themselves. We're financing the Soviet system, the, too. You wouldn't worry about that as president of the United States? Well, I would worry if they threatened my security and the security of the country. But I think it would be helpful to bankrupt the Soviet Union if they want to spend all their money because they couldn't win in Afghanistan and they're broke and now they're getting more loans from the Soviets. Ron, why do we keep getting into these foreign this predicaments? This is not a tactical fight. This is not a discussion of when you should go in. The left and the right so often argue about, well, we should go in, he's the enemy, we'll attack him, but we'll let this person alone. And then they switch and they flip-flop, and we lead to a disaster. We don't know why we go into these areas, and it leads to disasters like Korea and Vietnam. Seen or heard anything from the CIA, the Pentagon, the State Department, or the White House to suggest that Saddam Hussein is planning an attack on the United States? Uh, no, I, I see nothing imminent. He doesn't have an air force. He he doesn't have a navy, and he can't even shoot down. A, he didn't shoot one of our airplanes down in 12 years, and his army is one third it was 12 years ago. So, you know, this fiction that he's Hitler and he's about to take over the Middle East is is a I think it's a stretch. We allied ourselves in the 1980s with Iraq in its war with Iran and assisted Saddam Hussein in his rise to power. As recent reports reconfirm, we did nothing to stop Hussein's development of chemical and biological weapons and at least indirectly assisted in their development. Now, as a consequence of that needless intervention, we're planning a risky war to remove him from power. And as usual, the probable result of such an effort will be something our government does not anticipate, like a takeover by someone much worse. As bad as Hussein is, he's an enemy of the Al-Qaeda, and someone new may well be a close ally of the Islamic radicals. Although our puppet dictatorship in Saudi Arabia has lasted for many decades, it's becoming shakier every day. The Saudi people are not exactly friendly toward us, and our military presence on their holy soil is greatly resented. This contributes to the radical fundamentalist hatred directed toward us. Another unfavorable consequence to America, such as a regime change not to our liking, could soon occur in Saudi Arabia. It is not merely a coincidence that 15 of the 9-11 terrorists are Saudis. The Persian Gulf War, fought without a declaration of war, is in reality still going on. It looks like the 9-11 may well have been a battle in that war perpetrated by fanatical guerrillas. It indicates how seriously flawed our foreign policy is. In the 1980s, we got involved in the Soviet-Afghanistan War and actually sided with the forces of Osama bin Laden, helping him gain power. This obviously was an, an alliance of no benefit to the United States, and it has come back to haunt us. Paul, uh, this comes from Jay Majumdar from Roswell, Georgia, and he wants to know if you agree with Senator McCain's statement that the United States might need to have U.S. troops in Iraq for as long as even 100 years. I don't even think they should have gone, so <laughs> keeping them for 100 years, where's the money going to come from? You know, the country's in bankruptcy, and when I listen to this argument, I mean, I find it rather silly because they're arguing technicalities of a policy they both agree with. They agreed to going in, they agreed for staying, agreed for staying how many years, and these are technicalities. We should be debating foreign policy, whether we should have interventionism or non-interventionism, whether we should be defending this country or whether we should be the policemen of the world, whether we should be, you know, running our empire or not, and how are we going to have guns and butter? You know, the 70s were horrible because we paid for the guns and butters of the 60s. Now we're doing the same thing, and nobody even seems to care. The dollar is crashing, and you're talking about these technicalities about who said what, when. I mean, in, in, 19, in, 19, um, in 1952, we Republicans were elected to stop the war in Korea. 
1968, we were elected to stop the war in Vietnam. And tragically, we didn't stop it very fast. 30,000 more men died. So when I talk about these long-term stays, I think, how many men are you willing to let die for this? For something that has nothing to do with our national security. There were no al-Qaeda there, had nothing to do with 9-11, and there was no threat to our national security. They never committed aggression. It's unconstitutional. It's an undeclared war. And we have these silly arguments going on about who said what when. I think it's time to debate foreign policy and why we don't follow the Constitution and only go to war with a declaration of war. Governor Huckabee, the idea of a hundred year involvement. What do you make of President Obama's approach to Iraq and Afghanistan now that he's been in office? Every bit as bad as the last administration. Uh, maybe even worse because uh, he's not getting out of Iraq, uh, that's a pretense, and he's expanding rapidly what's happening in Afghanistan. He's continuing the bombing of Pakistan. He has not changed his attitude about uh, Iran. Uh, they're talking about uh, denying any shipments of gasoline to the people of Iran just to further antagonize the situation. What he's doing is, um, is a little more dangerous because he has neutralized the anti-war left. The anti-war left has just left. At least Bush was honest. I mean, he he was he was up front, you know, and he believed in in uh, preemptive preventive war. But everybody was hopeful that Obama would do differently than he isn't. So he has quieted down the left, and there's a very weak anti-war movement in this country now. And that obviously is something I hope to participate in reviving. Uh, and it, it has to be coming from the, uh, the old right as well as true uh, progressives who believe that uh, all this warmongering and killing makes no sense whatsoever. So you would get out of Afghanistan and Iraq post haste? I would. And my saying during the campaign was we just marched in. We can just march home. There's not, nothing good can come of it. And uh, it's an undeclared war. It's an immoral war. We don't have any money. The longer we're there, the worse it's going to get. And we just need to come home. We can't nation build. And besides, I will win this argument because we are bankrupt and we can't afford it. So it's going to end badly if we don't come to our senses and just say, let's quit this militarism around the world. I mean, we're in, we're in 130 countries and 700 bases around the world, and we cannot sustain these. And it is. It's pumped up by both the left and the right in the Congress. Oh, we can't do away with this weapon. It will be bad for jobs. There's conservative Keynesianism and liberal Keynesianism, always government managed which always fails and gives us the financial crisis that we're in. question about electability, do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not you are, in fact, viable. Your differences with the Republicans on the, with the rest of the Republicans on this stage has raised questions about whether or not you can actually win the general, the Republican nomination, sir. Well, we've only had two little primaries so far, so it's pretty premature to decide which one is going to be the candidate. But, you know, when, when you think about it, if you measured everything I've ever said, every vote I've ever taken against the Constitution, you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist. Are you suggesting the Republicans should write me off because I'm a strict constitutionalist? I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me because I'm a strict fiscal conservative, because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be de talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? Mr. Republican Robert Taft didn't even want us to be in NATO. And you're saying now that we have to continue to borrow money from China to finance this empire that we can't afford? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here?